This is Ken Chen, and we're very excited to welcome you to another episode of Encounters with God. Uh, today, I have a very special guest, one of my dear friends, uh, Tom McDaniels, who is an executive pastor at uh, LifeBridge Christian Center here in Longview, Texas. Uh, we'll explore several things with Tom. Tom is an author. Uh, he wears many hats. He's uh, written books, and he's uh, got a, a blog and a website. So, But right now, I think I just want to start with Tom just briefly to uh, give you an understanding of where he came from, how he met Christ. I know he has a dramatic testimony, and uh, we, we, were all, we were all good sinners, weren't we? We were. <laughs> we were good sinners. So uh, maybe just start in there, you know, Tom, just share with the listeners maybe how you came to Christ, and then we'll begin First of to... all, thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. Known you yeah. a long time. I, think, yes. we, I knew you when we both had dark hair. Yes. Well, you had darker hair, and I had some hair then. But yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, my story is, uh, of course, all of our stories are interesting, but... Um, yes. You know, I, I was five years old, Ken, and um, I was standing beside my mother in a pew in a church. I was standing up in the pew, and mother was standing beside me. And there was five guys in quartet on the church stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was standing there, and I was watching them. They had on white suits and white shoes, and you know, back in the day, they had white ties, the whole thing. And I don't just something whispered in my heart, you know, you'll do that one day. Mm. So I thought I was going to be a singer, yeah. but um, I figured if I was a good singer, I put it probably wouldn't have been saved. So, so I was too prideful to be a singer. But anyway, <laughs> so, you know, uh, I thought, and all my life, I knew that I was going to be in ministry. I, I knew that. Now, when I got 17, everything, I, I ran away and did all kinds of stuff. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. But it was, I was at five years old and I, I, I'll never forget that. And, um, Another thing that happened, 16 years old, went to church camp, Nazarene church camp, Kankakee, Illinois. Um, five guys in a pavilion. I remember it was dirty, mosquitoes everywhere. The pavilion hadn't been cleaned forever. You know, it was just dirt everywhere. And the picnic table was dirty. And and uh, the guy, was the, the counselor was like, hey, there, you know, you guys are here. Da, da, da. And he goes, um, one of you are called full-time ministry. Mm. And he said, which one is that? And I said, hey, you know, my heart was like pounding, you know, and all that. And I was like, I said, that's And started to sweat. Yeah, it was like, it was really, I, you know, because you're doing that in front of your peers, you know, their yes. friends and they're, you know, some of them you know, some of them you don't. Mm -hmm. But you're like, you know, you're 16, you want to be cool. You don't yeah. want to think, well, he's going to be a pastor, right? So, yeah. <laughs> like, so I was like, ah. Yeah. And I said, hey, that, that's me, you know. And he goes, hey, come here. We want to pray for you. And. So those two, uh, you know, I wrote a book called Defining Moments, which is this book rewritten. Grit to Grand is a re rewrite of Defining Moments. And those were two of my defining moments of my mm. life that yes. that really fashioned my future. And not only that, but God designed me. I remember I was like in a third or fourth grade and, and um, I was the guy that was always after the you know, the underdog, the down and out, the poorest mm -hmm. person. My dad finally told me one time, he said, don't bring anybody else to this house to feed. <laughs> you know, because I, I would bring home my, all my kid friends, you know, me even that, that was in the 60s. And I, think it's, I think it's interesting that you share that because, you know, as you share that, and I, and I didn't know this part yeah. about you, but it reminds me of Jeremiah chapter one. Yeah. You know, even God, even when, you know, you were running you from God. Wood, yeah. You know, God called Jeremiah to be right. a prophet to the nations right, right, right. from the get go. Right, right. You know, uh, he had his ins and outs with the Lord. He and, did. <laughs> you know, had a few issues, but right. he came through. So, anyway. yeah. So I, you know, I've kind of always known that. Um, yes. And uh, sixteen made that commitment, and then it was really strange. That commitment kind of sent me into a spiral. Um, the next year I just really was like, I'm done with church. Uh, you know, I, I just want to, I want to go run the world. Right. Yeah. 
you know, that's what we did. You know, our, our, our gang did it and I did it at the same time frame you and Bo did it. And, sure. and you know, it was like, uh, so 10 years of, and you know, that started out with innocence and then it went into drugs and alcohol and sex and, you know, premarital relationships and all kinds of craziness in 10 years. Yes. And then eventually into IV drugs. And that's a whole other story. Yes. Uh, but, uh, and then, I met Charlotte in another defining moment and it put me back in this thing because she was a Christian and reminded me of my roots. And, you know, she prodded me, took me to Marbury Baptist Church and I met her family and they were prodding me to, mm -hmm. and then conviction set in and all that started going off in me. And I was running, in, I was running the levy at the time and Studebaker, I was working at Studebaker's when I first met her and then took the levy job and, and the levy, which is a nightclub in Longview and, uh, was under really deep conviction and and man it was like and god wouldn't leave me alone you know just kept pulling tugging it's the hound of heaven uh, yeah it's like david said if i go to hell you're there you know yeah. that's kind of where i was at you and, can't run from that and then I, I didn't even told him i said i just ask him leave me alone i i want I want to run from you, you know, all that. Which, like I always say, you just end up in Whale University like Jonah, you know. Yeah. And uh, so finally, God just, man, he just kept squeezing me to the point where, you know, I I was just coming to the end of myself and yeah, couldn't, man. as well as the fact I was under conviction. And, and finally, the day came where God just said now, you know. And mm -hmm. Yeah captured me <laughs> i call it i got drafted by god <laughs> yeah. but actually it happened when i was when i was a, you know a child really well that, that i think that's so uh you know we don't want people to go out and have uh, a crazy lifestyle or no because they, they can they learn, make it yeah you can learn from our mistakes right you know, that i've made and tom has made but at the same time though tom i think there is something about people who have had dramatic conversions. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's not like you were sitting in a church pew and here on a Sunday, every Sunday after Sunday, and, you know, you had, uh, you know, let's say you didn't have a really right. bad background or you were running from God. Right. It seems like people like you or, you know, they end up just really getting on fire, you know, yeah. like Jeremiah said later, I've got fire in my, my bones, bones yeah. you know, yeah. and so, so how did that translate? So you... You met the Lord here um, in a period of time, I would assume. Just share with us how you felt called into the ministry, how you felt God was working on you. Uh, well, you know, I, I felt uh, I knew I would be in ministry when I was a child. I didn't know what it looked like. Yes. I didn't know nothing about the ministry. Right. Uh, you know, when I got saved, I had went to high school only, was going to go to college, decided no, kind of was an entrepreneur and, and um you know, I really never did work for anybody else. I always worked for myself and, mm -hmm. you know, just yeah. knew how to do some of that. And, and, um, so I didn't know really nothing about the ministry, but I, even when I was a heathen, I, I would say, I thought, you know, I was talking to a guy one time and, and he asked me what I really wanted to do and to, to, just to make it calm. I was like, well, you know, I've thought about the ministry as a career, you know, which is not yes. a career. It's a calling, yeah. you know, right. but, and, but I kind of, you know, formulated it that way for his ease and comfort. And, but inside of my heart, I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And then Charlotte, you know, came in the scene and I was working at Studebaker's when I first met her. So we were, we were actually drinking pretty heavily one night. And I was sitting in the studio, in the Studebaker's at the, in the sushi, in the shoe shine stand. We had a shoe shine stand yes. there. And I was sitting there and uh, she said, she said, tell me something you never told anybody. And I was like, man, I mean, it was like one of those another moments where I'm like, Am I and I, a few or three times in my life, I had told like some of my close drug friends yeah. that I was supposed to preach. Mm -hmm. Well, it'd be like, you stupid, you know, you ain't, you're just, a, you know, yeah. that ain't going to happen. You're the worst right. druggie we know, you know, yeah. all that. You, you, you stay up and shoot up when everybody's asleep and all this. And I was like, hey, listen, you know, I, I'm just sharing, you know. Well, uh, so I tell Charlotte. So we're there. And she, I said, well, I'll tell you something. I said, I'm supposed to be a preacher. She started crying. Just, just started bawling. And I was like, whoa, that's a little dramatic, you know. I mean, yeah. she just started weeping. And uh, she said, I'm supposed to be married to a preacher. 
we weren't even we were just dating yes. right wow and so I'm like, oh my gosh, this is getting really this weird. You know? <laughs> this goes to another level. Yeah, it does, right? it goes, yeah. and it did. It, it yeah. you know, it awareness wise and mm-hmm. all sorts of things. And then there's a story beyond that. But those are the those are the moments that defined, you know, the fact that this is this is a God thing. Yeah. And and then the the process of that, and then you know, there's there's other stories that that have those defining moments in them. But those are the three moments that kind of said you know i like to say it this way only become a preacher if you can't do nothing else right, <laughs> right? i mean you've heard that before i'm sure right. and it doesn't mean you can't don't have the ability it means that this is all you can do because this is all god's going to let you do mm-hmm.